you know, Micah Parsons responded to George Kittle with the T-shirt that George Kittle had underneath his pads on Sunday Night Football. Obviously, we asked George Kittle about it. At first, he said, yeah, it was just on my loop. Didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. Then he said he was paying homage to uh, throwback. Yeah, someone 90s. from the 1994 Niners team yeah. that had a similar shirt. And then Micah Parsons answered on Micah Parsons' podcast, where Micah said, like, you're making his personal pretty much. My guy, but I'm going to say this. Laugh now, cry later. We got oh. something for that. Just trust. If we see them again, just trust. And we're going to put it just like that. I ain't going to put too much on it. You're going to make it personal. We can make it personal. So then, right after Micah answers George Kittle, Debo Samuel is on the Up and Adams show with Kay Adams. And this is what Debo Samuel says in response to what Micah said in response to what George Kittle did. I think, uh, How you know, personal it was already. It was already personal before the game started. Now, um, 42 to 10, I don't think you like want to see us again. It might be a little bit worse. <laughs> okay. So that is something that normally you'd hear players say, ah, it's fun. It's that Debo's just like, yeah, it was our, what are we talking? We, mm -hmm. we, it's going to get personal. Well, for one side, it felt already personal, which is the Niners. They're the ones that won by 32 points. Maybe the Cowboys should have made this personal going into the <laughs> game, but then the Niners don't back off at all. Nope. Don't say, hey, it's all good. It's like, yeah, it might get worse next time. <laughs> I love everything about what's happening right now, and I enjoy the culture that this Niners team has. Yeah, I love the shit talking. Now it's obviously going to be something else surrounding this game if they see each other again, which, you know, we assume they will at some point down the line, but uh, I love it. You know, get on the podcast now do i love getting on the mic talking about after losing 30 about 32 points not so much but parts is a dog i'm sure he'll bounce back mike i had to talk about it it's his podcast it was definitely going to get brought up it was going to be something he yeah. had to chat about I, you're saying he could have said well when you win by 32 you can do whatever you want yeah. and then just move on to the Bum. next one I mean, hey like you said it's his podcast hey you they, do whatever they, they hell I, you want. I appreciate the shit talk shit we got to talk about something me too yeah. I, I, I am very thankful that mike was like oh okay is that what you want to do now we know and then i like the debo did not back off at all kyle shannon obviously didn't tell the boys like hey what the we just kind of about Debo's like, we beat the shit out of you guys. Yeah, right. Killed him. Just shut up. How about that? Next time it'll be even worse. And I truly feel like the Niners feel like they're only going to get better and better at this point somehow. That's what I why would they why would they back off? Like they they could say whatever they want, and there's gonna be zero repercussions because they can back up literally anything they say. Like they could say anything about any game about a wide receiver, quarterback, running back, about the posing defense, it doesn't matter. We like, used to talk about this with Bama fans. Whenever Bama was <laughs> yeah. on their run, mm -hmm. it'd be so much fun to be a Bama fan during that run because you could literally talk to anybody at any point and just say, yeah, my team's going to beat your team's ass. And you had a good shot of that taking place. And for decades, you just got to celebrate every single week. And then whenever a loss came, obviously it was devastating. But we'll get you next time for sure, for real. Now the Niners are like that. Their fans can talk shit to anybody. It's what the Patriots fans were able go. to do for 20-some years. Now the Niners, who have not won a Super Bowl with this team, yeah. are seemingly in a position to be able to do the same exact thing. Good for them getting to experience that right now. Yeah, and I love the shit talk back, too. Like, it, it is awesome that instead of, like, the cookie cutter answer that we usually get like uh you know probably shouldn't have done it all that nope standing by it think it's awesome and for micah i assume there are a lot of cowboys players that are like yeah micah you're one of the top five players like I, I gotta go block nick bosa when we play the 49ers so if you keep pissing them off it is gonna be worse because they're not i'm not gonna have a chance that reminds me of an incredible time um we were kicking a field goal and it was the end of a quarter so we had to go to the other end and there was a d tackle for the other team I forget what team. I think it was Baltimore or Minnesota. It feels like there's purple in my brain. Right? I don't okay. remember. Was walking next to me, and he started shit-talking me. Okay, this guy started shit-talking me. Huge dude, like 360 <laughs> pounds or whatever. So I'm not one that, like, I look at him, I go, what's that, buddy? And then he starts saying something. So I just go into the roll of decks, and I start firing back nice. at this guy, right? 360, 330, whatever it is. What's he going to do, fight me in between the quarters? <laughs> no way he's going to do that. So I keep saying stuff. I said some pretty, I mean, I was going for... I was going for murder scene, yeah. and he was bringing it back. And then all of a sudden, he lines up now, and he's screaming at me through the guard, okay, through the guard, through the field goal thing. And I'm like, oh, shut up, you know, like uh, talking to him. And then set, boom, kick, ball goes through. We walk off. Guard comes up to me. Hey, listen, a lot of fun for you, right, just to be able to say whatever you want. Yeah, I'm the one. 
that he had to take. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bingo. So I heard you said some good stuff. Yeah. Obviously got a brat. <laughs> yeah. Way to go. You won the little chirp session, but I'm the one who almost got my knee blown out <laughs> because I'm the human. So maybe next time, let's not. I'm like, ooh, my bad completely. <laughs> yeah. That's a situation happening here potentially with Micah, with Kittle, with the Cowboys, with the Niners, because if they had 11 Micah Parsons on the Dallas team, which feels like what the Niners do. Pretty good. Bingo. Yeah. That's like what yeah. the, it feels like that's what the Niners have. It would be a different story. What do we think the top is for the Dallas Cowboys this year? I've become, Ooh. you said you think they're going to meet later. That would mean they're getting to the playoffs. I think they get to the playoffs. Okay. So that's what you think. That's good. I think they make it to the playoffs. AQ Shipley, you think the Dallas Cowboys make it to the playoffs? I do not. Ooh, Why? Really? You think they stink? Who else? I think they've lost. Uh, a very good football player in Diggs, and I think that changes the outcome on defense. And I think you're starting to see what can happen, right? Like the the Niners, they do it to a lot of teams, right? They put the, they put the blueprint out, and if you can attack the edges and kind of hit them where they're soft a little bit there, and then on offense. Every time Dax in this game, everybody, everybody, every news media, every pundit, let's see what Dak does on the big game. Does he ever deliver? Jets, he did. Jets was a big game. Jets, yeah, it was. Tampa, uh, Tampa. Jets, he, he, 32 completions, two Ooh. touchdowns, mm-hmm. no interception. Do we have the yep. schedule? If, we get, if, if I go look at this, I think they make it to the playoffs. So it's seven. It's going to be seven in. I think they'll be – I don't think they win a division. Obviously, Eagles take the division. But they get in, and then – I guess going to do what Dallas they're, does. They're currently, like, if the season were to end today, which is stupid to say, even say, but they are currently in the seventh seed. I, I mean, appreciate you saying it's stupid to say, and then you said it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love yeah. it. For, Preface. For talking like, point, you, they when, are currently sitting in the seventh seed. you look right at now. the teams below them, it's like. Go ahead, uh, roll it, run them off. Sure. Uh, eight is the Saints. Packers, Rams, team. Commanders. Bears. Rams. Rams, yeah. Better Rams, team. maybe. With Cop back. Packers, maybe, huh, mm-hmm. Ty? Well, maybe. I mean, at this point, though, it is kind of like any of the teams that are kind of on the fringe there, seven seed in the playoffs. It's like, do you really want to go and then either have to play the Eagles or the Niners, and you're probably going to get beat by four touchdowns, five touchdowns? I mean, that's kind of where I'm at with the Packers. I think it's a little bit different with the Cowboys, but if they're if they're in that position where they have to go play the Niners, potentially, if they don't get a bye in the first round, like, that ain't that ain't gonna be good for them. Congrats to the Niners not making the Super Bowl in the last what four years? Yeah, five four years. Yeah, 2019. Four years and still being the team that everybody's like, you have to beat the Niners at some point. <laughs> yeah, you have to beat the Niners at some point. You're gonna have to beat the Niners at some point. And what do the Eagles do? Uh, they just continue to win under the rain. <laughs> win, <laughs> win, win, win. Undefeated. Do what you got to do. The NFC seems to have its two top dogs. 